All right, in this video, this is T's multiple choice math review video number two, and we're going to talk about some common issues with percent word problems. The green example most people can get right, but this red example is where I see students make mistakes very often, and I want to talk about that in this video. Before doing that, this is a multiple choice math review. I have a free sample. And then if you're interested, I have a full review with over 90 questions with more to come, and you can find links to both of these in the description. Also, if this is one of your first videos in September of 2020, I did create a T's Math Facebook group. A link to that is in the description as well. But anyway, on to this first example. Most people can get this one right, but let's go ahead and look at it anyway. Sean purchased a collectible item for $50. He later sold it for 20% profit. How much did Sean sell the collectible for? Now let's be careful here. It does ask how much did Sean sell the collectible for? Well, he paid 50 bucks for it, and then he's going to make a 20% profit. So he's going to sell it for more than what he paid for it. So automatically, I'm going to eliminate A and D, because if he sold it for $10 or $30, he's losing money, and he did not make a profit. Some of you may actually end up picking one of these answers, and I'll explain that right here in a second. Now, the quickest way to do this is to find 20% of the $50. Now we can do a proportion here if we wanted to, but I'm going to stick to speed techniques because the T's test is timed. And if we find 20% of $50, that's the same thing as taking 0 0.2, I'm converting the percent to a decimal. Of means multiply, $50, and 20% of $50 is $10. Huh, check that out. $10, that was one of our answers. Had the question said, how much profit did Sean make? The answer would be $10. However, the question says, how much did Sean sell the collectible for? Well, remember, he bought it for 50, and when he makes a profit, he's gonna to have to sell it for more than 50. It's gonna be the $50 plus that 20% of 50. That's the $10 profit he's getting. And therefore, 50 plus 10, he sold the item for $60. Our answer is C. Now you may have picked B if you had just simply taken $50 and you weren't paying attention and maybe you just thought this said 20 bucks because 50 bucks plus 20 bucks is 70 bucks, but that's not correct. We have to find 20% of 50. The quickest way to do that is to multiply them. That's the profit that Sean made. But since the question said, how much did Sean sell the collectible for? We need to add that 10 bucks back to the 50 this is what he sold the collectible item for, $60. Now our second example, this is where I see people make a lot of mistakes. Samantha purchased a purse for $120. The price that she paid is a 50% markup over what it cost to make the purse. How much did it cost to make the purse? This is not what you want to do. You do not want to find 50% of 120. You do not want to multiply 50%, that's written as a decimal, of 120, and you're saying, oh, well, that's 60. $60 is not the correct answer. $180 is not the correct answer, because if people do not read this carefully enough, they're going to take the 120 and add the 60, kind of like what we did up here, but this is a completely different problem. 120 plus that 60, yes, that is 180, but that is not the correct approach. We're down to two answers here, and here's what I want to do since this is multiple choice. I'm going to pick this 80 bucks, okay? So let's suppose it did cost, let's look at the question now, how much did it cost to make the purse? Let's suppose it did cost 80 bucks to make the purse. Now, 50% of 80, let's find 50%. 0.5 times 80, that's 40 bucks. This is the markup. This is the 50% markup over what it costs to make the purse. Why is that the case? Well, I did say, suppose it costs 80 bucks to make the purse. They mark it up 50% of that cost. That's that 40. And 80 plus 40 gets us to the 120. Well, the 120 is what the purse was sold for. Now, if that confuses you, which it does confuse a lot of people, let me show this to you in an algebraic way. So let's suppose the cost to make this purse. I'm going to call it C. C is how much it costs to make the purse. 
Now, the people who made this purse, what are they going to do in order to sell it and make a profit? They're going to raise that price. How much are they going to mark it up? 50% of that cost to make the purse. 50% of that cost to make the purse. Now, listen up. C is how much it costs to make it. This is how much they want to raise the price. What we have to do is we have to add these together. This is how much it costs to make the purse. 50% of that cost is going to be added on in order to get that retail value that Samantha paid of 120. Now this is the equation that we want to solve. We have 1C plus 0.5C, that is 1.5C, and this is equal to 120. And now a basic equation here, we divide both sides by 1.5 to get C by itself. And if you take 120 and divide it by 1.5, you will get 80 bucks. One thing I want you to look at here if you're still confused before I let you go. Check this out and check this out and look at how we got the 120. This C, there's that cost. 50% of C, there's that 40. And when we take the 80 and the 40, just like over here, this 1C and this 0.5C, when we add these together or when we add these together, notice we're getting the 120. So this here was a multiple choice tip where we kind of work backwards to get the answer, whereas here is an algebraic approach. Either way works. This is probably the quickest way on a multiple choice test, but you have to practice these. Knowing when to multiply by a percentage versus when not to multiply by a percentage, the only way you're going to get good at that is to practice. And with that said, I would highly encourage you to try out that full review over 90 multiple choice questions over at my website. You can find links to that in the description. And there you have it, two examples of common issues with percent problems. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.